What a life I've brought you into. Will you ever forgive me? Those were the harrowing questions that Wad al Khatib asked her newborn daughter in a documentary named Fosama, which has been shortlisted for an Oscar. The journalist and filmmaker recorded some 500 hours of footage documenting Aleppo's violent and deadly siege at the hands of the Syrian regime and Russian forces. It's a visual letter about the human cost of the ongoing conflict, and it's been dedicated to the little girl that lived the first year of her life under that bombardment, Sama. We're now joined by the woman behind that film, that's Wad Al Khatib. Thank you so much for being with us on Middle East Matters. Before we start, Wad, let's take a look at a clip of for Sama. 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 <laughs> سما عملت هالفيلم مشانك بدي اياك تفهم شو اللي كنا عم نقاتل مشانه Well, thank you for being with us. In one hour and 40 minutes, you really managed to humanize this conflict. The viewer really, really identifies with you. Uh, you also very clearly relay the voices of children, which actually we rarely hear from. Was that all very intentional? Uh, like, I, I, I don't know really how I've done this, but it was more the things that you obvious that you need to hear from. These children, this woman, these people who... As you said, like usually people don't look at them while they're doing the news or like uh, a, any uh, tough situation. But in that situation, when I was there as a mother and as a woman who living there, I felt that our voice need to be out. And that's why I was just like trying to hear from all of them what they think about what the situation is. And of course, throughout this film, you really oscillate between life and death. At some point you say, I don't want to die. And then when you're back in Aleppo, you say, I can die happy now. Is that really uh, the reality of war, accepting both, the same as the beautiful moments uh, that we see in the film versus the ugly? Like we've tried so hard uh, through the film to reflect that through experience of human being, how they are so strong in one moment and they are so weak in another moment. Uh, all of this like uh, complicated situation between like, hope sometime and desperate sometime, between like life and death, between all these like black and uh, uh, like white things. All of this was all mixed between uh, uh, like our hearts and our minds all the time. And I really just try to explain that to people as much as, as they can without giving them that feeling, but just give them that chance to go through this experience and understand what does that mean really. Why do you say there's strength, there's weakness, there's also this moral dilemma that runs throughout the film, this question of, yes, you and your husband Hamza and the others had a very important cause, but what about the risks that you actually faced as a family and, of course, your baby, Sama? Like, during the Syrian situation, you can't really, like, uh, look at this risk and say, like, wow, it's too much, because... We lost many people. Many people have been died while they were fighting for a better country for all of us. We can't just like say that we, we don't want to do this and like stay aside. We are all part of this community and we need to do our best for these people and for us all. There's In Syria, there's more than 6 million refugees all over the world now. There's like hundred, thousands of hundreds of uh, uh, people who were arrested by Assad in, in, in uh, his presence. There's many, many people who were just like trying to look for a better life and all of them they didn't survive. So we are one of the luckiest people. We can't really just complain about that. And there are some very graphic moments in the film. As you said, people dying, families grieving. Do you think being a woman uh, gave you the kind of access that men may not normally have? Yeah, in many places, yes, but also in different places, like it wasn't that the case at all. But actually, I felt that the access that I have, it was the uh, because I was part of that community, because I was like a wife for a doctor and I was a mom for a children. Uh, and because I was like just part of that community, living with them all the time, I was going to the shops and markets with these people. I was uh, like going to the school where 
these children were going. I was living in the hospital where people, when they are injured, come to the hospital. And I sh actually, I believe that just being there and living through that experience gave me the, like, the main access for these people's lives. Wadi, you just mentioned you were part of this community at this hospital. And this film came, for me, with a very clear message. Stop bombing hospitals, a message that you and Hamza actually took uh, to the Cannes Film Festival with you. Wad, the international community didn't react then. Do you think anything will change now? Like, we... I don't know really what the... that hope about that, but we really believe that we need at least to do our duty to that. We need to, tear, like, tour with the film all over the world. We took the film to the UN. We are planning to go to the Congress. We came to many, many, uh, like, uh, politic, politician uh, and uh, uh, politic uh, events, and we are trying really to bring these people who can make difference in this world and put them in front of this experience to watch for someone and understand what life looks like. Because usually all these people, they deal with Syria as just like numbers or reports. Why now we give them access to go there and experience that feeling? We hope that that will encourage them to take their responsibility and do something for the people who are still living in Syria under these bad circumstances. And what your family has now claimed asylum in the UK, does that really feel like a new beginning? Or I suppose, as with all refugees, are you left with this real great sense of loss? Actually, I don't think anyone of any refugee all over the world can like move and forget about what they want to do. Like they, this experience which we had, it will not, like nothing will heal that uh, a part of justice. We're still thinking every day of the people who still stayed in Syria until now, and they are like suffering from the same bad circumstances. And we're just trying to do what we can do from here, from this great platform which the film provided us to tell the world and remind them about what's happening in Syria and look for a real action to help these people. And an extraordinary job you're doing, Wad al Khatib. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for speaking to us about Farsama. It's certainly one of the most mm -hmm. moving films that I've seen.